Hello everyone. I am presenting today how to start hosting hackathons in your city. My Twitter is Ariel Sanchez Moore. A favor, please take a picture during this session. Tweet it out with the brown bag and VMworld. I really like seeing the, those pictures because I show it to my wife who understands then that I'm not just lying that I went to a conference. I really like interacting uh, with people on Twitter and the hashtag V community. So make sure you reach out. I always love to hear what you're doing. A bit about me, I'm a Costa Rican. I live in Orlando now. I work for VMware, uh, part of the CTO ambassador program as trained over here. I'm a big advocate of the V community. Anything that has a V in front of it, I am a fan of. But more importantly, and one of the best things I've ever done is become a part of V Brown Bag. I started using Twitter, using Twitter for VMware and for VMworld and to further my career back in 2013. It has been one of the best decisions of my life. Make sure you do the same. I want, and the reason why I'm doing this talk today is because I want other people to, I want to help other people do local hackathons. So this is our agenda. It's very simple. Why little hackathons work so well, how you can get involved and how you, you can create them in your local community, and the lessons learned that I found that help make them successful. So hackathons, right? If you go to my blog, you will find that I have a blog, uh, blog post that basically explored this idea in full. It's called My Love for VMworld Hackathons and Little Hacks. We just had the VMworld Hackathon last night. It was great. It's a very, it's a very uh, welcoming event that has a lot of like, free food, free beers. You can talk to people for four hours. You can actually sit down and learn something and learn from other people and make real connections. So VMworld Hackathons for me are one of those, those events you cannot miss. And if you want to find more information on that, you can just uh, hashtag VMworld Hackathon and you'll see all the information about that event. But here's the thing. Those only happen once or twice a year if you go to Europe. We need another way to keep learning because we cannot just learn one time a year. Let's do little hackathons, meaning that let's meet together. So when you have smaller meetings in your community, you don't need a sponsor. It's not like a VMO that somebody has to pay for the pizza. Come on, it's 10 bucks. Put them, somebody can pay for the pizza this time. You just need power, a, a table, some, uh, some chairs, and maybe a whiteboard. This is the typical office. Most offices are closed after 5 p.m. So if you set up that you're, you're going to have a little hackathon at 6 p.m. and you get permission from your work or from the university or whatever it is, it's very easy to set up. So we actually have been doing this in Pittsburgh for a year. If you search for PGH Little Hack, you'll find every event that we've done the second Monday of every month. And in central Pennsylvania, in Blair County, we have the hashtag BC Little Hack, which is a similar event. So this is something that is very easy to coordinate. Now, I want you to understand this. The V community, the people that are involved with VMware and are on Twitter, we're a very helpful bunch. We want to help you. So if you're in your town, you start asking, hey, I live in Miami. Who from the V community is here? You're going to get responses. Same thing in Wisconsin, same thing in California. You're going to find people. And that's all you need. You basically just need to tell people, can we do a little hack one of these days? I found a space. That's the number one thing that you are probably going to have a little difficulty with. But here's the thing. When I talk to people about this, everybody tells me, well, I don't know. It's the same excuse of why, of, of why they don't blog or why they don't want to do public speaking. Listen, you have to get past that. It's not that everybody knows everything and you know nothing. That is not the case. You are an expert in what you do every day. Whatever you do for work, you can probably teach someone else because you've been doing it for two years or more. So make sure that you understand what you're really good at. When I was a customer, I was really good at PCI environments because that was my job. Otherwise, I, I didn't know anything else, but I would sit down with other people that had other job priorities and they will find out that they could teach me something and I could teach them something. So that's what you want to do. You want to have that interaction. Remember, failure is temporary. This is the way to learn. If you don't try and you don't fail, you will not grow. So make sure you do that, and especially make sure you do that with others. When you teach people how to do things, you learn again, because it's difficult to explain. You have to really understand it. So make sure that you do that, and you also take this opportunity to practice your public speaking. If you have a blog post that you did, and you think, hey, this is a pretty cool blog post, next meeting, you come in, 
and you say, I want to show you my blog post. So you go in and you say, hey, I don't know, it's a short blog post or a long blog post. You stand up and you explain what you're trying to do and you'll get feedback. And this is the, best, the most important part. We're going to get into that. But the, the important part is that you just try to get better every time. And little hackathons are an excellent avenue to do that. Typical stages of participation that I see. And if you're leading the hackathon, you're going to run into this. People at the beginning, they just want to sit down and see. They lurk, right? And at some point, they are interacting. They're actually telling you. So it will be up to you as the leader and organizer of the, of the little hack to say, hey, what do you do for work? You know, what are you working on? I don't care if you're just a Linux admin or just a, a, a desktop admin. You're doing something I can probably learn. You want to talk about it? So that interaction, look for that thing. And you have to create safe spaces. A little more on that later. But at some point, they're going to start contributing. And it's a, it's a, it's a really cool effect when you have a group of friends that start getting together and they're just trying to teach each other. So once you get to the point that you say, hey, my community is actually pretty healthy, mentor others, you know, make sure that they, like in our case with Pittsburgh, we had a, a satellite uh, little hack that started because we started mentoring the guys and they were, they were driving two hours to get to the little hack and they basically said, well, don't you start your own and we'll drive the two hours. So it's not one sided, right? So if you mentor others, it actually helps. You can make bigger events. So lessons learned to make little hacks successful. You got to make them for the right reasons. If you are an SE, this is not a sales exercise. You know, you, you really want to do something for the community to help the community learn. Everybody, remember that everybody brings something to the table. So if you think about your rules, right? If you're organizing the event, you're going to set some guidelines. Make sure that you have good attitudes. The most required attitude, positivism. Our first three little hacks, it was only the two leaders. And we just had the greatest time because we had finally a time to just explore ideas. That's, my blog is on Hugo, and I would not, my blog would not be on Hugo if it wasn't for those times that I had four hours to figure it out. So don't be discouraged if you only get two people, three people, four people the first times. Our biggest was 12, and, and, and that was like the fifth one, mostly because Kyle Rudy was in town and we convinced him to come. <laughs> uh, another, the other two attitudes that I want to showcase here, frankness and openness. We are here to help each other. If somebody is giving bad advice, you know, explain. You don't have to be mean about it. You just have to be, you do it in their best interest, right? Hey, I think, I think that's wrong. Maybe we should research it. Hey, I think maybe that's true in this case, but remember that these other cases, we grow when we get feedback. And finally, always treat people with respect. You know, that is the number one thing in this world. If you treat people nice, if you treat people how you want to be treated, you will always have a great time. So, some tips on how to start. Communication is the key. Your role as a leader is to make sure that everybody knows about this. I like making a blog post because that, for me, makes it official, okay? Make a blog post, say, we're going to do this. It's gonna be this kind of event. You know, it's gonna be a little hack. Bring your laptop, blah, 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 blah. It's gonna be at this location. These are the times, this date. And give them, you know, an, a, a week or so. Don't just put it that we're meeting tomorrow. Give them at least a week, two weeks, hopefully and then start promoting it. Every VMUG chapter in this country has a page, a forum. So you can go ahead and talk to the leaders and tell them, hey, I'm, I'm trying to organize a little hackathon. I want to get you know, more into scripting. I want to do different things. Can I put this event? And they'll be thrilled. They'll be thrilled because most people don't interact this way. And they'll be happy that users are getting together and they'll probably want to come too. So make sure that they know about this and make sure that you also tweet about it. Choose a hashtag. That helps a lot, especially when I want, for example, today when I'm trying to show you things, you can search the hashtag and you will find every picture from every meeting. It's great. It's fun. Now, one thing once you actually, once, once you actually get people in there, if you go to the VMware code Slack, which is a free uh, Slack, which you just have to put your email and it will actually send you the invite and you don't have to get approved, it's out approval, you can create a private group in there and basically say, this is the Miami, I'm, I'm picking on Miami, but it can be anywhere, right? This is the Dallas Little Hack Group, and you add everybody. So you now have a way to talk to people apart from the blog post, apart from Twitter, right? Not everybody's as, as, as enthusiastic on Twitter, not everybody reads their VMUG emails, but if you get it into the custom of Slack as a communication platform, very, I mean, the, the strength of Slack is to have collaboration with code. You can paste code in there. 
you can upload files, you can call people through Slack. Um, I get, and the reason why I recommend this uh, VMware Code Slack, it's also because the hackathon is kind of like what this uh, Slack is for, right? There's channels for Ansible, there's channels for Power CLI. Every one of those things that you're trying to learn has a channel, and if you get everybody in there, it's so easy to go ahead and ask. So make sure that you leverage those things that are free and useful. Finally, if you achieve something, share it. That's the most important part. Make sure that people start getting, get accustomed to using GitHub or GitLab or whatever it is, but sharing what they are finding, sharing what they're doing. One thing that I love to do was bring down a nook in case anybody wanted to test something that they were just trying to do. Sometimes people have home labs. Sometimes people have remote labs. You don't know who's going to show up, but more than likely you're going to get something out of it. So make sure that you share that and that will help others get more into the idea of coming and helping and learning and teaching others. Um, la, 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 la. All right, so I, I want to talk about the benefits of this. The number one benefit that this is going to give you, you're going to make new friends. Friends that are very valuable. Friends that you can rely on when you have a problem, when you don't know. You're going to figure out that these people are really good with uh, HashiCorp tools. These people are really good with Puppet or Chef. These people are really good with GitHub. You're going to expand your personal network and you're going to continue learning. And you're going to get into this habit of welcoming people and basically learning as things come along. I find I am not a very good person for sitting down four hours by myself. But if I do it with others, I'm excellent. I can sit down and talk to others and learn and have a lot of fun. So make sure that you understand this. And also, we are going to help you. This is what I'm offering right now. If you start a little hack, I will make sure that it is a success. So having access to mentors in this big community it's also important, but we just need you to say, I want to do it. Finally, I don't know how much time I have. I'm good, uh, two minutes, but I want to show something real quick here. These are 15 tips that I gave to run your little hackathon. So make sure you find that blog post. And uh, again, any other question, reach out to Colorado. I mean, reach out to me. Thank you so much.